Here's your host of Late Night with Andrew Dick, Mr. Andrew Dick. Live from the Carnival Villages Late Night with Andrew Dick. And of course, here's your host with Late Night with Andrew Dick, Mr. Andrew Dick himself. What are you saying? Everything all right? It's all about Carnival 2013, even though it is night in your house. We are at the Festival Village where preparations are busy taking place for Carnival 2013 on this wonderful Thursday. Yes, guest Thursday it is today. And our guest today is none other than um, police spokesman Ricardo Henson telling us about the safety of Carnival 2013. Yeah. Now, of course, the breeze is feeling so good right now. Let's walk around, see what the preparation is like. You know, got to big up um, 40 each, 37 films. What are you saying, Brad? Everything all right? Setup looking nice. I like it. Now, of course, the, these are the infamous... Um, um, for thingy, for thingy, the thingies, these are the, the, the infamous thingies that you just have to go through when you come in the village. Now understand very clearly that they work. Now understand when I say they work. Listen what happens. You come here. You walk by. Beep, 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 beep. Officer, what happened? And then the officer say, Andrew, we have to stop you because you're too sexy. Understand because that's why it's beeping. Anyway, Late Night Show with Andrew Dick. We have a lot in store for you today. Guest Thursday. We're going to make it work. Let me do this thing. When we come back, we'll be at a police station with the one and only police spokesman, Ricardo Henson. So, stay with us. WTN TV. Always on the spot. We'll be right back. back to school after all those weeks away. She looks normal. I thought she was sick in the head or something. She definitely won't have those excellent grades she had before. She missed a lot of classes. Mm -hmm. Miss straight 10, bump to straight zero. <laughs> Here she comes now. Watch this. Hey, Adriana, we heard something happened to you. <laughs> What's wrong? Um, well, um, I wasn't feeling well, but I did have something to ask you. Miss Lake said I could ask you for your notes so that I can catch up since no one seems to want to lend me theirs. Well, um, Jasmine is already using mine. Sorry. Sometimes the stigma hurts more than the illness itself. I'll lend you mine. I never thought I would have to pass you my notes. He always has such good grades. Maybe we can study together sometime. That should be a good idea. Be a friend. Learn more about mental health and what you can do to stop mental health stigma by going to the Mental Health Foundation's website at www.mhf-sxm.com. Okay, we're here with the police spokesman, Ricardo Henson. Um, Mr. Henson, can you tell us um, a little bit, Carnival 2013 in full swing? Of course, 
police department always has a plan when it comes to keeping carnival as safe as possible. Tell us a little bit about um, yeah, tell us a little bit about the preparations. Okay, okay, Andrew, thank you. First of all, I want to thank you, um, Mr. Dick, um, for giving me the opportunity on behalf of the police department to give you a little um, information in regard to um, the upcoming carnival season. You know, like the prior years, um, 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 our main focus uh, um, is always safety. We have to be safe. Uh, we have to make the carnival safe for as our visitors, for the children, and and for for all who is uh, partaking in the carnival. So, um, um, as I said, the the main focus is uh, safety. Um, this year is uh, we are coming full force, like the prior years, as I said, and um, we are looking forward to a very big carnival season tonight, um, which is uh, April 18th. We are doing the opening uh, parade, the opening jump up, and um, that is going to be a very large one. So far, we have about eight bands, and um, that is going to be a very large turnout. We, we are looking for um, many people to come out and uh, witness this uh, jump up. So we will be starting at around uh, 8 o'clock. That is when we will be leaving at St. John, that is in the um, Saunders area. And we will be heading to Fort Phillipsburg. Um, the roads will be closed at 7.30. That's the um, Gladiola Road will be closed at 7.30 for no traffic going and coming to um, the St. Peter's and Reward area. And um, we'll be lining up um, all the trucks and on the bands at, at that time. We are leaving, we want to leave at 8 o'clock exactly, so all uh, the drivers and the, band, um, the bands are, are already informed that we are leaving at 8. And our intention is to make, the, make sure that the carnival arrives at the village uh, at approximately 11, few minutes after 11, so um, the um, official ceremony can take place. And then from there, everybody can go into the village and pick their favorite boots and start their carnival season. Um, in the meantime, you will be getting, um, put, make sure that the, the, the Swaliga Road, um, all the trucks go back to the barnyard and the traffic will be able to flow freely in front of the carnival festival village. Now, of course, fending is always um, uh, an issue for the police department. Um, I know that um, you had um, discussions before with um, the Vrami department as to um, who is allowed and who's not to um, allowed to actually sell things on the side of the road and you know of course health being also an issue, um, hygiene. Um, what has the police done this year? Well, well, okay Andrew, um, this is something that's been going on for quite a while and we hope that this year we have tackled it a little better than the prior years. Uh, we have been sitting with uh, the um, Vrom, Vrom department, Vromi department, department Vromi, whereby we spoke about um, a no vending zone. Um, it, was, uh, it was established that uh, the whole of Front Street, no, no vendors on Front Street, I know that people already have um, wow. permits for those areas. Those people, you don't touch them because they have permits for that. But new vending permits, permits that are given for during the carnival period, none will be given for the Front Street area. None whatsoever. Um, there is a map that has been laid out where there is um, completely no vending. Like, for instance, the Suwaliga Road. The Suwaliga Road, that's uh, the road in front of the university. From the roundabout all the way up to the Little League Ballpark, there will, that's a no vending zone. Um, at this present time, there is a, a, a truck, and, and, and I have uh, received information that uh, the um, personnel of the Vrami department will be going over there and speaking to those persons. There are um, areas around the roundabouts. No, nothing around the roundabouts. No roundabouts around the roundabouts. It's not allowed to vent. Um, no permit would be given for, for those areas. Permits have been given out to those people that have um, requested permits, but um, they, they are allowed to vent only out of the vending zones. Of the no vending zones, I'm sorry. And um, where there are areas that you can vend, like on the, below Ketty's uh, kitchen, below Ketty's kitchen in the parking lot, but then the, 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 your area that you've set up is not allowed to be in front of the light poles. Everything has to be at the back of the light poles, yeah. back of the light poles. And you are not allowed to drive any stakes in the ground. No stakes is why, because in the past, and we believe this year again there is some damage to the electrical wiring that is running under the ground because they drive these stakes into the ground and destroy the, 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 the wires. And, and a lot of people don't know sometimes after Carnival why the parking lot is so dark or why the streets don't have any lights. But when you drive these stakes and you cut the wire, it hits the wire, as long as the stake is in the ground, the contacts remain. But as soon as you pull out the stake, the contact is gone. Mm -hmm. And then 
we have to start digging now to look for where the contact has been broken. But that is something that Romy has been looking into and we're trying to avoid it this year. So we make no parking lots on the um, eastern side of the police department or on the next side of the road where um, men's places and you know, that is an area that you can, uh, it's a no, also a no vending zone. You understand? So and, we'll yes. Yeah. Um, there is a map, and um, I will show you to you in a while, that we have, um, that Rami has put together. There is a no vending zone where you're allowed to vend, but you have to vend behind of the light pole, and um, certain areas that are used for emergency, and certain areas um, that um, would be um, open only to emergency vehicles and nothing else. So the alleys that connect back street and front street, none of those alleys the way it's called the station, none of those alleys are allowed for people to go into and park your car or, or, or rent from in those alleys. Nothing, absolutely. So we're going to be out there in full force looking at that. Okay, as far as the zero tolerance is concerned, I know the police has instituted a zero tolerance policy um, a couple of years now, um, especially if anyone during um, the carnival season, um, during of course the jump ups or in the village, the um, ACOP or anything like that. Yes. Zero, zero tolerance. Yes. Yes. So tell us, is that still intact? Most definitely, that 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 um, has been maintained. We are, were in discussion with the public prosecutor's office this year again, and they want to maintain that policy is because it has been effective, and we hope that um, in the prior years we still had one or two uh, persons that were arrested, and they have been charged, and we um, intend to continue that. It's because. As I said, it's effective um, because people come out to Carnival to enjoy themselves. They don't come out to, to cause confusion, to cause fights. But uh, there are youngsters that use these type of uh, um, events, see, yeah. events to, 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 to really get back or get to each other um, and try to solve their problems like that. But we are not going to accept it. We were definitely going to be tackling it. Refresh our memories. What is zero tolerance is again? A zero tolerance is that um, anything that is criminal wise so um gang fights um destruction of property um, um ill treatment that has related to carnival or not you will be arrested you will stay in custody during the period of time of the carnival um, you will be brought before the judge of instructions and you will be charged so you will get a summons at your home after you've been released what date is your court date because they're going to take you all the way to court all right. Um, as far as um, tips, safety tips, I understand oh, okay. you have some for us. Yes, we have us. some safety tips. You know, people venture, leave their homes, and they and they go out on the streets, and they're having fun, and they forget all about safety, and we have to remind them. And I think it's very important that I just at least mention a few of them so that uh, the people could well be aware of uh, what's going on. Okay, um, some of the tips are the following. It's... Um, be aware of your surrounding at all times because people, as I said, go out and they forget about their surroundings. Um, be alert of suspicious people and vehicles. So you may be walking the street and you, somebody could, suspicious could be either walking behind you, next to you, or even a suspicious vehicle. You don't know the license plate. It doesn't have a light. It's tinted. And so those are the things. And avoid dangerous situations. It could be any type of situation that you may see that is dangerous. Avoid it. Turn away from it. Let it uh, go by. Say, for instance, in the evening that you're leaving your home, turn on lights, radio, or television so that it looks like somebody is at home. All right? Um, lock the doors. Lock all windows. Lock them well. Um, and um, even if you're leaving the house for just a few minutes, do that. Um, don't take your expensive items and display them in the living room. Turn on all lights so people from outside could see how what kind of expensive stuff you have. Don't do those things. So don't display items um, from the, that can be seen from the outside. Park your car in a wet, well lit area. Make sure that all windows and doors are locked. Avoid carrying large amount of cash because people like to flash, you know, and like they got big money. Well, we don't need that because they're going to steal your money from you. And if, say for instance, you go to the ATM and uh, you don't trust the situation at the ATM, you see suspicious people around, leave the ATM alone, use a next one. All right? And then it says here also, carry your wallets in front pockets. Don't put them in the back. Because for years now, we have been having problems with people at pickpocket. These guys, them are really good. Um, what, you want, what, what happens is that they, they would, it would happen when you're on a crowd. And the next thing you do, when you want to pay maybe for something, for refreshment or something, there is no wallet. It's gone. Um, 
very important is to keep your children keep your children as close as possible to you so they don't get lost uh, and 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 uh, do, so they don't get separated from you pay attention to persons walking in front and behind of you especially in crowded places that is where these pickpocket people really get into action and you never know who's pickpocketing you because they, they move in very professional way uh, you have a bag they don't put their hand into your bag they cut it open and stick their fingers alone in so you don't feel the weight so it's very very important that you pay attention of people around you um, um before entering your vehicle when it's parked have a good look at it look in the back and the front seats make sure that nobody is hiding um, in in your vehicle and um, when you leave your home let the neighbor of the neighbor's home let, her, let them try eye out for you at your home and you do the same for them when you are home and you look out for them you understand and those are some of the very important tips that we have um, from the police department to the community for the carnival season now before we go of uh -huh. course we need um, a message your message the police department message to the people of st martin concerning carnival 2013. okay um from the police department side i must say that um we are here we will be coming out in full force um we are asking cooperation from the general public to um <clears throat> be safe um conduct themselves in a, a decent manner you know, um, so that um, it could be an example to our youngsters because um, our youngsters right now need people that need to guide them. They need guidance. They need care. And, and we believe that um, we as parents are the ones that have to give, them to our, to give it to our children. So we are looking um, for the parents to play a very important role in guiding the children during this carnival season. And, um, of course, we want everybody to come out and uh, have a good time and uh, enjoy themselves, feel safe because we're going to provide the safety um, so that everybody can have a good time. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. All righty, we're enjoying it. Hope you enjoyed the interview with um, Police Inspector Ricardo Henson. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take a commercial break. I'm here on the bike, riding the bicycle. It, it's kind of like strange because it's like not moving. I tried moving it just now, but then a bunch of securities come around and say, was like, hey, you can't touch it. You can't touch it. So I, all I could do is describe it. Okay, so there's a handle, there's a mirror, and then there's a, a seat in the back. Look like a clown car to me. I don't know. But anyway, we'll take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back.